With the 17th selection of the 2013 first year player draft, the Chicago White Sox select Tim Anderson. Harold, this young man has come a long way in a year's time. Uh, didn't get drafted out of high school. I don't think people really knew him after he went to junior college. He immediately becomes one of the best position players in the White Sox organization. When we got in the draft room, there were a number of other you know, players we were considering. You know, once we got him, it was a pretty exciting day because we felt like we drafted a major league player. I didn't know what to expect. You know, I knew I was excited. Um, I didn't have no baseball friends, so I really didn't know what to expect going into it. I didn't know what number I was going. You know, as the draft went on, the, the White Sox called and said if I was still there at 17, that they was going to take me. So I kind of knew that was my landing spot. I was excited about that because I knew going through the organization, I had a chance to go to Birmingham and play in front of my family. The thing that really like um, that made me nervous when I first got drafted, I was like, man, am I, I'm going to be able to hit pitching because I, I didn't really face any pitching that was like 96 or 97. Like I was just afraid about, you know, will I still be able to hit? And I was like, man, like, <laughs> can I do this? It took Tim a long time to, I think, become comfortable in his professional baseball skin. He's very quiet. He was very quiet. Um, and he kept his head down and just worked and worked and worked and worked. But getting comfortable in a game that was largely unfamiliar to him. Quiet, energetic, but you definitely saw the athleticism. We went straight to work. Slowing the game down and when to slow down, when to speed up. What up, Tyler? You ready? Huh? Born ready. I know it's that. I was with the Knights, and I was in the lineup, you know, before the game. Um, we went through BP and everything, and right before the game, I wasn't. You know, it was either trade or, you know, you get called up something. And, uh, you know, after the game, after I said the whole game, they told me that I was getting called up, and I flew out that next morning and played that night. I was like, man, like, this is what you work for, you know? I just remember being on deck, man, and just being so nervous and, and just feeling out of body. I feel like I'm just looking at myself. Number 12, Tim Anderson. A warm welcome for the Alabama kid, his first major league at bat. My first major league game I've been to was when I played in. And, uh, you know, after my first hit, I hit a double. Um, you know, it, everything kind of kind of like settle down a little bit more. Down the line, fair ball. Oh, will he remember this one? Tim Anderson with a double in his first major league at bat. But after the first at bat, and I was like, man, it's, it's the same game, really. You know, it's just a different stadium. It's wild to think about it, but he was like part of the wallpaper that first year. When Tim showed up, it was beyond that point where the team was trying to tread water and become competitive in the AL Central because the season ended up being what led to the whole rebuild. Major League Baseball is really hard. Uh, not everyone succeeds right out of the gate. Sometimes it requires patience. And some people, you know, were writing that, you know, he's not going to amount to, you know, the player he is now, but he went to work. Tim is the type of young player that's always, he, he's thirsty. He, he is thirsty for advice. He's thirsty for guidance because he wants to talk with someone that has already gone down the road that he's traveling on. I, with Tim, I think it was, it was, it was slow growth. Uh, slow growth to a point then it was rapid growth. First major league home run, one pitch. You know, when I first got here, I was shy. I didn't talk to anybody. I was nervous. I didn't really know what to expect. This one goes to short. Tim Anderson with his basketball expertise flashing here in the first. From the point where I stepped in this organization, they allowed me to, you know, uh, play my game, be the best version of me. They allowed that. Left 
side. Anderson gloves it. Tim's got a shot. And he knocks him down. When Tim stopped being the guy who wanted to try to blend in, he and this team became a rocket ship. And he's going to go. And here's the throw. I'm telling you, I have never seen a player actually make that substantial adjustment that they knew they were going to make like Tim did that year. Dead ball. You can put it on the ball. And Tim made the play. Foul ball up the middle. Anderson has it. The throw. Got Cabrera. Tim Anderson makes sure you notice him. I honestly, truly, the Royals did that. The Kansas City Royals trying to get Tim Anderson to pipe down made him this. Great way to end this homestand. Abbreviated as it was, as the Sox try to sweep away the Royals, then it's on to Detroit. Tim crushes this ball. He throws the bat, the ball goes flying, it is gone! Two nothing, Sox. The ball was majestic, the bat was a javelin, and the Sox lead. That's home run number four, he's driven in 12. The Sox have a two run lead, and Tim Anderson. When that happened, like, I didn't even realize it was as bad as it was. You know, I didn't think it was as bad. It was just, I mean, it was a cool moment. I mean, it was a home run. I, didn't, I don't hit him. I don't hit him like that. So I got excited and I enjoyed the game. And I played with passion. I played with a lot of energy and I played to have fun. I was more so confused after I got hit. I mean, I couldn't believe that he hit me, but I mean, you see the reaction. And now he got I was going to tell you with the bad flip. And here come the benches. Fun in baseball is not allowed. We have to yell at each other because he flipped his bat because he hit a home run. Why don't you just get him out? That would be the idea, but that's not going to happen. So here comes everybody onto the field. Tim Anderson held back by Abreu. Let me know that I wasn't alone. Um, they had my back 110%. You know, I can say ever since I joined this organization, it has been, you know, just feel like family. You know, for them to stick up for me in that moment, you know, it definitely says a lot. Are we pull for each other here? Somebody out here for Tim Anderson out of the game. I don't know about that. I mean, he just got hit by a pitch from the Royals starting pitcher. They're going to send Keller out of here. Why would Tim get thrown out? You get, you, so you're going to stand there and take a projectile in the rear end and get thrown out of the game for it? That's insane. We're in a time now where it is much more uh, allowed that you're able to show your emotions when something big happens. However, there's still something that's incongruous in that I think players generally are okay with that happening, but when it happens against your team in the heat of the moment, sometimes you're going to get upset and say something. Things get mutated. When, when you become part of the news, you are at the mercy of people who have way different opinions of the world than you. Okay. I'm going to speak for what I believe to be from okay. the heart. Ni from the heart for about 99% of guys who ever put on a big league uniform. Thank you, Jordan. Okay. Tim Anderson should have gotten hit in the tuchus and walked to first. Like that Tim Anderson moment was a personality test for a lot of people. And that's, I think, why it became this iconic moment, not only for the White Sox, but in baseball. You know, it, at one point it was confusing because I didn't know, you know, I didn't, I didn't really understand what I had did wrong. I know Tim would never do that to show up a pitcher or to show up the other team. When he does that, he's, he's trying to fire up his teammates. He's being a leader. As I recall, it was the day after in Detroit. I went down to the clubhouse and I had a one-on-one -on -one 10 minute conversation with Tim. Immediately it went to, I want kids to know they can do what they want to do with their hearts. Just be you and goodness will follow. That is a hell of a message. And I just, I adore the fact that his stardom really began to pop when somebody told him not to be him.
That, that game. That's my favorite White Sox moment I've gotten a call. And that was the night where you're like, ah, he knows he's right. And he got the payoff on it too. Jimenez had three strikeouts in a row. You come up there, what were you looking for and what happened? I was looking for my pitch in my zone, I got it. Nobody is ever gonna stop Tim Anderson from having fun on a baseball diamond. We learned that tonight, we knew it before. It's a guarantee. They feed off his energy, especially in those big moments. I think anybody around this club would tell you as Tim goes, <laughs> so go the White Sox. Their ascension has kind of mirrored his uh, ascension as a you know, superstar quality caliber player. Seldomly strikes out, always making contact with the ball. He's a very confident young man. Not cocky, don't get cocky mixed up with confident. That's what makes him, like I said, one of the best hitters in baseball right now. Tim is a powerhouse. He still is small frame, but he is a powerhouse within himself. <laughs> I think the biggest part is just continue to work and uh, continue to learn and be a student to the game. And, uh, you know, that's where I'm at with it. And, you know, just obsessed with continuing to get better each and every day, you know, day in, day out. Uh, I tell people all the time, it's, you know, it's not just what Tim Anderson does in between those white lines. It's what he does in the clubhouse, on the bus, on the plane. The maturity that he, that he expels out on the field, his leadership. And just the simple fact that he is enjoying the hell out of his job. And that spreads among his teammates. I think it's pain. It starts as pain that then becomes, I can do this, and I am doing this, and I want you all to come with me. It's Tim's version of leadership. He's had a lot of bad stuff happen to him. Investigators tell me a fight broke out in the parking lot across from the 3000 bar. Brandon rushed to help the victim before he was shot. To me, makes him just like a deeper feeling, emotional person. And that all piles up to create, this is how I will change the world. From that point, we wanted to impact the community in the honor of his name. That's real mentorship. That's real caring. He's changing the trajectory of their lives.